Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a part two to my Kingdrasil Royal Knights deck. Um, so ignore part one, especially the part where I put the hybrid in for game. Um, I just completely forgot that you cannot digivolve in that deck. So yeah. So I put in the pinned comments of the last video, but I just want to say, yeah, that, um, that part was just wrong. I completely forgot about it. So when I was actually play testing the deck, um, I found that there were two main issues with that deck. So the main, the first and foremost issue, um, I did put in the Jezmon and the Gallantmon. So then you can purge and then get them out and then attack with them. Or you can Omnimon them out and attack with them. Um, their effects are good, but they weren't good enough to actually include in the final deck build. Um, for example, the Gallantmon combo with Examon, where you can um, combo Gallantmon with Examon for four security in one turn. It is good, but most of the time it doesn't come up when you when it would actually matter. Like, you can pull off the combo um, pretty often, but it's not often enough or at the right time for the combo to actually affect anything. Most of the time, you're just getting the pieces in, and then you're able to purge and then attack for the one attacking, or you can Omnimon them out, and then you can pull off the combo, but at that time, then the combo becomes moot. Uh, you don't really need the combo at that point anymore so after play testing the deck a little i realized that you know you don't really need the xmon and gallopmon and jazzmon plays so i just replaced the bt12 um gallopmon and the bt6 jazzmon i just took them completely out of this deck my camera is not really focusing right now i i have no idea what's going on with it like it is not focusing on the play mat it's just really blurry, but it's just like, I don't know. Well, let's just proceed with the deck profile video. So this is V2. So you do want to play four King Drizzles. Um, King Drizzle is the only Digi Egg that you need. Um, some people do play Mother D Reaper. Like very few people put in a Mother D Reaper. Um, the reason is that... Um, if you are able to not hatch Mother D Reaper as your first egg, it's like if you're playing four King Drizzles and one fifth egg, and like that egg is the Mother D Reaper, you have a one in five chance of not hatching that when you're starting out the game. And then basically, instead of only three sources that will automatically ramp under itself, you can uh, get a Mother D Reaper out. Worst case scenario, if you do get the Mother D Reaper as the first egg, you are able to push it out on your second turn. But again, it still it slows the down considerably um, with the Mother D Reaper strategy. So I am not going to do that. I'm just going to play four King Drizzles. That's all you really need. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on with my camera, so I'm sorry. I'll figure it out later. Four of the new BT-13 Magnemons. Um, so this Magnemon, very good. It has blocker, um, 7 cost, 7,000 DP. Ideally, this is the Digimon that I really want in my opening hand. So if I'm going first and then I hatch King Drasil, start a main phase, put another King Drasil under it, then I can immediately reduce something by 4 plus 1. So I can reduce something by 5. So if I get this Magnemon in my opening hand, I can just easily plop it down um, for two memory. So I can just put my opponent at two. Very good play. Um, when this um, Digimon would leave the battle area, you draw one. So that is honestly a very solid opening card. Um, ideally, I would mulligan for this card. And I'm going to show you in order of preference um, what cards I would love to mulligan for. So these are the BT-8 Magnemon. Um, so um, 
at first glance, the this Digimon doesn't do much for the deck. I, I'm having very, I'm having a lot of get difficulty with my camera. Um, so it's a seven cost, seven thousand DP blocker. Um, so at first, it doesn't seem like it does much for the deck, but when I was play testing, I found out that what I really, really wanted was a consistent. Digimon that I really want to on play <clears throat> turn one <clears throat> and you know four copies of this BT13 Magmon is good you really do want this at four um, but you know if you don't get it then there are other Digimon that you can play like Dinosmon but still not great to play Dinosmon for five memory on turn one and put your opponent at five I really wanted a more consistent um, way to play cheap Rural Knights. So I just decided to find four more copies of Magnemon. So this Magnemon isn't as good as the BT-13 Magnemon for the Rural Knights deck, <clears throat> but it is still a really great Digimon for you to mulligan for um, in your first opening hand. Play this for very cheap. And then when it leaves the field, you do not draw one. So this Magnemon is more preferred to play overall. This Magnemon is still pretty good. Not as good as a BT-13 Magnemon, but still better than other Digimon to play on turn one, in my opinion. Um, so there are eight Magnemons. So you do have a bunch of Magnemon that you are able to um, search for or like try to mulligan for turn one. And then if... You don't get them they will appear later on in the game it's not horrible um for you to play more magnemons later on for free so if you just reduce their costs completely to zero you can play them for free then maybe play a system on blanc and then another system on blanc for example um, just because you are playing it for free or very cheap then you can just keep ramping up your king king still later so even if you don't get in your opening hand it's still a very great Digimon to have later on. And the 7 play cost is very good for my build. I have found it very useful. Um, I've found it very useful when I've played out a Dynasmon um, for free. And then I'm at 3 because of Marcus. So I'm at 3. Uh, I play out Dynasmon for free. And then I just really want to board wipe my opponent's level 4 or level 3 Digimon. So I just hard play Magnemon for the full 7. Put them at 4 memory but I get rid of their level 3 and level 4 lineup. So Magnemon is just really great um, for just being a cheap roll knight. Probably the next best Digimon that you want to look for if you fail to get the Magnemons in your opening hand. But... Dynasmon from BT13. This card is great. So on play, reveal top four cards of your deck, add two Royal Knights to your hand, and then trash the rest. Um, and then all turns effect when you play another Royal Knight, then you board wipe your opponent's level threes and level fours. Um, again, this is not once per turn, so in case it does matter, and then you play it Another roll knight, you board wipe their level 3 and level 4. They play more level 3 and level 4s. You can play another roll knight to just get rid of them again. Really great. So the board wiping does come up. Um, it is very good against rush decks. Um, I have played against many decks that would rush me down. But this Dynasmon is just really great for clearing board. But also fantastic for just digging through your deck for more Royal Knights. Sister Mon Blanc from Star Deck 12, Jasmine. So this Sister Mon Blanc, very good. On play, trash one card in your hand so that you can draw two. Um, so it is an optional effect, I think. Yes, it is completely optional. Um, but most of the time, you do still want to trash something to draw two. It could be another Magnemon. If, you're, if your hand is just chock full of Magnemons, you can just ditch a Magnemon to draw two, for example. Or if you've already got a Memory Center in play, you don't really need another one. Then you can get rid of your hero, Amanokawas. I will get to them in a second. 
And then, although this isn't as good as these four Digimon to get in your opening hand, I do think that Omekamon is still a good Digimon if you have nothing else to play. Like, Magnamon, Magnamon, Dinosmon, Sistermon, Blanc. This is probably the order of preference um, that I would look for, that I would prioritize playing. Um, first turn... Um, and then I want to put my opponent at very low memory, or if my, my hand is really lacking in Magnemons or cheap Digimon, I'm just playing Dinosmon so I can search for Magnemons for next turn, for example, or just digging for more Royal Knights is just really good. Sichuan Blanc, really cheap, so even if I'm going first, I can ditch something to draw, uh, to draw to. Omekamon is not bad. Um, Omekamon could arguably be at a depending on what you have in your hand Omekamon could be a better play than playing System on Blanc but just as just a general um, um, situational rule of thumb I would just play them in preference of this order um, of what I get I would try to find them in this order and if you know I don't get these I would just play the Omekamon but, you know, sometimes the Omekamon could be good. For example, if you have Sistermon Blanc, you don't really want to ditch anything. Um, Omekamon is still the better play. Four copies of Omnimon from BT13. This card just makes the deck work, literally. Um, so, on play, it has two on play effects that you can choose. So you can either delete one of your opponent's Digimon... Or if you choose not to do that, um, then you can instead play one of each unique named Royal Knight from under your Kingdra Seal, um, and then all of your Digimon for the turn gain Rush. Very useful to say that this is a global effect. If you do that, then even if you played something not from the sources, like even this Omnimon would get Rush when you play it out. Or if you just play a system on Blanc um, later, then you can also then it also gains Rush for the turn. Very very important um, to note. But this Omnimon is just really useful to work. Basically, you ramp up your Kingdra Seal with different Royal Knights, and then when you have enough for game, then you play this Omnimon, and then you just rush out with many Digimon at your opponent in one turn. Um, if it's mid game, or if you don't have enough pieces under uh, King Drizzle yet or if you are in a bad spot to bring up your Digimon and then pass turn you don't want to do that you can also use the pri the first effect and then on play delete one of your opponent's Digimon it can easily get rid of one of your opponent's large level sixes Royal Knights of the Purge I think that this is a must play at four um, Royal Knights of the Purge does two main things. So first, um, on play you draw one, so it helps you to dig more into the deck. Um, and then two, you can ramp up your King Drizzle. Actually, no, I, I was wrong. It does three main things. So then it ramps up your King Drizzle. Um, and so after you draw one, you can place a Royal Knight from your hand under your King Drizzle um, in the breeding area. And then three, you are able to pop pop this later with its delay effect, bring out a Royal Knight from the Digivolution source, and then it gains Rush for the turn. It's on play, doesn't activate, but just really useful. Um, for example, cheesing out Dynasmon, and then after Dynasmon is out, then you play Magnamon, for example, or you play any other Royal Knight, and you just board wipe your opponent's level threes and level fours. And then you swing with Dynaspawn. Or, you know, there could be different reasons why you want to bring um, a Digimon out. Like if you need a blocker, or if you want to activate a one attacking effect or something. Um, Roll Knights of the Purge, very good. It helps you to dig through your deck, helps you to ramp, and then helps you to get another attacker or blocker, or just to cheese out an effect like Dynaspawn. The all turns effect, not the on play effect. So I'm playing four, 
Fror from Master to Disciple. So I had thought about this card a while. Um, I was like, I'm playing this card because I like it. Um, I was questioning if this card is actually good for the deck. I was wondering if I should replace it with something else like Leopard Mon. Everyone told me Leopard Mon is really good. I have to use um, Leopard Mon in my deck. Um, so I did some more play testing. And honestly, I gotta say, from Master to Disciple, I absolutely love this card. Um, so it does several things. So because of King Drizzle's effect, um, you can, when you place an option with delay into your battle area during your turn, or any Roll Knight option with delay when it's placed into a battle area during your turn, so even if you, for example, hit this in your opponent's security during your turn, King Drizzle will gain you the three memory. But um, this basically comes in for a net three if it's the first delay option they use during your turn because six to to use and then you gain three back so it comes in for a net three this is two to use and then you gain three back so you get this in for a net minus one so when you use this option for two you reveal top three cards of your deck grabbing a roll of night card can also grab one of these because they also have Roll Knight and traits or any of your Roll Knight Digimon. And then after that, trash the other two cards that you did not grab. Oh, you can also grab Sistermon, but you basically never grab Sistermon with this. Um, but you could. But basically, after you trash the other two cards that you do not grab, you gain the one memory. So, or like you gain three back for a net one memory increase. So, it's, this is basically Hammer Spark. Um, just useful just in case you want to be extra sure that your opponent does have an ex antibody in security or a hammer spark in security or something that you might think, oh, okay, if I hit security, I might lose one memory or two memory. So just getting that extra memory just in case you're attacking and you want to be extra cautious so you're keeping turn, um, that's useful. Or just to extend your plays slightly or to decrease the amount of memory that you're actually giving your opponent, this card is just really good. Um, but honestly, the digging through your deck really should not be overlooked um, in different card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pot of Greed. Um, it's just really good. Like It uses a card slot, but you are also getting card advantage. But not only that, but you are also able to cycle through the cards just like um, this card, um, you can select, you can cycle through your deck for the top three, and then see if you have a roll of night that you really want. Um, when I played this card in my deck, I found it very easy to hunt down for Omnimon, for example, or if I have the Omnimon already in hand, but I just want a different um, roll of night to place under my Kingdrasil. This card is just really great to just use so they can cycle through the next few cards of your deck looking for Royal Knight cards that you can use or even if you are already good on Royal Knights and you just need that one memory or you just want one more memory. This card is just really great too. But honestly, I, I tried the deck without this card. I put this card back in. Honestly, this card, I feel like I really do want to play four of these just for the extra consistency. Um, I tried it without it. I played Leopardmon. Leopardmon is okay at ramping, um, but it does not help me to dig through my deck, to cycle through my deck. And that's what this deck really needs is just the cycling power. So um, Dynasmon, really great for cycling. This is really great for cycling. Dynasmon and this both trash your cards, meaning that it actually makes Lord Nightmon very good in this deck, just in case you trash something like an Omnimon, and that, or you trash a different Royal Knight, and then you want to get it back later with Lord Nightmon. These two cards work very synergistically with Lord Nightmon. So not only is this good for cycling through the deck, getting you memory, um, helping you find the Royal Knight that you need, but also fills up your trash so that it basically acts as a second um, hand. Um, so then you can Lord Knightmon the card back later. But honestly, 
I really do love this card. I think that this has to be four of, at least in my deck. It adds so much consistency. Um, I tried it without four of, and I regretted it. Gonkamon. I'm playing three Gonkamon. So Gonkamon is a 13 cost, 13,000 DP blocker. Um, red, white, uh, red, black. Um, on play, you can play a Roll Knight from under your Kingdrasil um, without paying its cost. So basically, you can reuse the on plays of your Digimon. So if you have Gonkamon in hand, you play Gonkamon. You can retrieve back Dinosmon, for example, to search even more cards in your deck. Or you can play out another blocker. Or you can just play out more Royal Knights that I will show you soon. But this does activate their on play. Um, if you need another blocker, or if you need Dinosmon out for some shenanigans, or if you want some more things that I'm about to show you soon, yeah, Gonkamon is just a jack of all trades. Gakamon can just replay your other Digimon out. So it's just really great. Um, Gakamon can also play Sistermon, uh, Sistermons from your trash. So if you have no other Royal Knights that you want to play, you can just still play back Sistermon Blanc from trash. And then on play, Sistermon Blanc, trash one to draw two. So Gakamon is also good at getting Sistermon to cycle through your deck. Just in case you need it. Also very good. When um, Omnimon brings out Gonkamon, because when Gonkamon comes out, you can bring Sistermon Blanc from trash. And like I said earlier, that Sistermon that is just played, even after Omnimon's effect, will still gain rush for the turn. So it's just really good. I forgot what card is next. Oh, okay. I'm playing three Marcuses. Arguably, I can bump this up to four Marcuses. Um, really good memory setter, five costs, so it is kind of steep, but it helps you to get rid of Psychmon, for example, or any other floodgate that prevents you from reducing playing costs. Even if you are not playing against a deck that has floodgates, just being able to play this tamer for five and then get rid of a small rookie, um, possibly a small champion. But if it's smaller than 3,000 DP, this card is just really good for getting rid of it. And it's just really good removal. Um, I'm considering bumping this up to five to four. Um, the reason why I'm not currently playing it at four, I'm trying out three Hero Monokawas. Um, so Hero Monokawa, the main reason why I'm playing Hero is just because of hero costing four play costs instead of five so just in case i don't want to give my opponent that extra memory um, i want to play a memory center for four um i really do want more red sources so i'm playing six red memory centers just because of how absurdly good i think that this card is from master to disciple very good card um, when I was playing four Marcuses, it doesn't always come up. So if you early game get from Master to Disciple, it's just a brick in your hand. Um, but, you know, if I play six memory setters, I find that six is a really good number. So then you can get your memory setters early on. So then you can still play it from Master to Disciple. This card, I don't know. I just really love it. Like, I tried the deck without it. And honestly, I think that I, I really do like having six memory setters just to play this card. But I do wonder about this distribution. If anything, I would remove one hero Monokawa and then put in another fourth Marcus. Just if you are playing against a Psychmon deck or any deck that has a Floodgate, then having another Marcus would be very useful. So I think that I would probably remove one hero and then put in a fourth Marcus. But yeah, I think that six red memory centers is a pretty good um, distribution. Two BT-13 Jasmon. Um, so this is really good at removing small Digimon. 
if this is the only card on field, or if this is about to be the only card on field, you play it, you can pop something up to a combination of 6,000 DP from your opponent. Um, if you have, for example, Sister Mont Blanc from the turn prior, and then you, uh, for example, play another Sister Mont Blanc, or whatever you do, then you play this. 6,000 plus another 2,000 DP for each other Digimon you have. So 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. You can delete Digimon up to 10,000. It's just really cool to be able to remove a to remove at least one Digimon with us when it comes out. Um, like when you play it at the right time. I think that two is a good number. Possibly three could also be a good number. But I think that two is okay for my build. Um, this is also good at buffing out your other Digimon. For example, um, I had a situation earlier where my opponent had a 13,000 DP Digimon. So then I roll Knights of the Purged, a 13,000 DP Digimon from my, um, from my, um, King Drizzle. And then I played Jezmon out. So because of the Digimon that I played out plus Jezmon, I can delete something 8k or less. And then because Jezmon was out and I had another Roll Knight out, then it was 14,000. So it was able to swing over the 13,000 DP Digimon. But Jezmon also has this effect where all turns for each other Sistermon or Roll Knight you have of your Digimon get 1,000 DP. So the buff does sometimes come in handy. It came in handy tonight for me. Um, but, you know, it's mainly here for removal. If you play this with Omnimon, you can delete a whole bunch of other Digimon. So this is just really good for early game removal um, or late game removal or mid game removal. Examon. So Examon is in here just because I personally like Examon. Some people can choose not to play Examon and if they do they can play like Old Force Vidramon for example. Um, I just like Examon currently. I might take Ex uh, Examon out but I like Examon because Examon is able to basically keep a an opponent's Digimon suspended during the next unsuspend phase. So on play Suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. That does that Digimon doesn't unsuspend during your opponent's next unsuspend phase. So the wording is different than Samadhi Santi. So you don't have to suspend that Digimon in order for it to not be able to unsuspend um, next turn. So um, this is instead choose a target if it's already suspended or if it's not suspended. Um, then it still doesn't unsuspend during its next unsuspend phase. Um, so that is pretty good. I also like a little cheeky combo with Examon. So you can roll Knights of the Purge, one of your Digimon out. It gains Rush, and then you swing at your opponent's security. Okay, and then after that, you can then either play Examon from hand, or you can play Omnimon, and then you play Examon from your sources. The one Examon's on play is used. Suspend one of your opponent's Digimon once per turn during all turns. When an opponent's Digimon is suspended, unsuspend one of your Digimon or suspend another one of their Digimon. So if you rushed earlier with the Royal Knights of the Purge Digimon, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon using Examon. Their Digimon is suspended so you can unsuspend your Rusher. So then that, you get another swing that way. So I like the control aspect of just playing this to stop your opponent's Digimon from unsuspending during their next unsuspend phase, but also just in case you do want to unsuspend one of your Digimon. But the second part of this effect, which I frequently forget, once per turn during all turns, when one of their Digimon is suspended, you can also suspend one of their Digimon. So I, I just remember this for the aggro part. Like I suspend one of their things. I unsuspend one of my things. But I, I just forget that if I want to disable one of their attackers, when they attack me with one Digimon, suspend one of their other Digimon or 
even that Digimon if it unsuspended. But just being able to suspend one of their Digimon after they attack is a pretty good effect to have. Uh, so Alphamon is kind of a splash for me. Alphamon can come in handy, um, but it's just awkward. I don't think that really helps me in my build that much. Uh, I am considering replacing Alphamon with Craniumon from BT3 or from BT13 just have more blockers out. Alphamon is situationally good. Um, it's just like a, a weird um, splash card for me at the moment. So I'm honestly considering if I want to keep Alphamon or if I prefer to keep to swap in Craniumon. Could also be a meta call. So in some metas, it could very much depend on where you're playing. The locale, like um, like if there are a lot of rookie rush decks, then Craniumon is probably the better choice. Um, Alphamon, not so much. Um, if you're playing against rookie rush, Alphamon is just a dead card in your hand. Um, and I have noticed that last week when I played at locals and then I was facing armor rush and I was also facing Sukumon rush. So Alphamon was just a dead card in my hand. So, you know, this could be your splash card. It's a splash card for me at the moment. Uh, I can keep it in or I can keep, I can swap it for cranium on or, you know, I, I have also thought about it. Um, if you're, this deck's main weakness is rush decks. So Armor Purge, um, Sukumon Rush, for example. So replacing this with Mecha Norimon is not a bad idea. Just because Mecha Norimon is 6,000 DP, 4 costs, level 4. So it won't be bounced by bounce level 3 effects. Um, 6,000 DP, so it can block a good amount of rookies and champions. Um, arguably some, very few ultimates, but you know, Mace, Mo Mecha Norimon is just a cheap four cost to give you some control over rush decks, um, or Defexmon. Defexmon is also very good, um, at getting rid of Armor Purge Digimon because it digivolves and then deletes it, or Sukumon digivolves and then deletes the Chumon. Um, when I played with those decks last week, against those decks last week, I found difficulty removing two Digimon in a turn. So I would Jesmon and then attempt to delete one of their Digimon, but then that would just armor purge and like they would live. Or I would have to do like a combo play, bring out Dynasmon, play Jesmon, and then Dynasmon deletes the level 4, so they armor purge, and then Jezmon deletes the level 3, but it's just, Death Xmon is just one card that does it, it de evolves and then deletes, so I would say that Death Xmon, Mechanorimon would be really good um, splash cards if you choose not to run Alphamon, um, also BT13 Galmon is also good too, um, so even if you tuck it under your Kingdrasil, and then you roll Knights of the Purge, it does have that one attacking. So BT13 Galatmon, very good. Um, you can on play, remove something 6,000 DP or less, or if that doesn't work, remove something 13,000 DP or more, and then one attacking, same effect. So that Galatmon is also good at removing uh, Armor Purge Digimon or Sukumon Rush Digimon, you play it, delete something, it saves or um, prevents deletion or whatever, or it revives itself from the trash, you swing, and then you get rid of it. So it's just a really good Digimon to have. Um, Alphamon, I would probably replace with Mechanorimon, Defexmon, or BT13 Galamon, honestly. Then two copies of Lord Nightmon. This card honestly should not be overlooked. Um, this adds some consistency to your deck. It, I'm not saying that happens all the time, but you will be glad that you have this Digimon 
if you really do need an Omnimon and you're just looking for your Omnimons and you have an Omni Omnimon in trash, you just play this and you get it into your hands and then you can play it next turn. Like, because of Dynasmon, because of um, Brum Master the Disciple, you are just getting rid of your cards. Arguably, Sister Mon Blanc too. Just in case you pitch something that you want to retrieve later. But mostly these two cards. There's a lot of trashing effects going on. Um, so just if... Or if your opponent just attacks your security, you just lose an Omnimon. Um, but there are some trashing effects going on. And just being able to play Lord Nightmon. Retrieving a Roll Knight from your trash. Um, that is pretty good. Like if you need something... Like, you want to delete something, you want some more control going on, then you can just grab your Digimon from your Trash of Lord Nightmon, play them out next turn, ideally. Or if you are really in a pinch, you have enough memory, you can play it that turn even. Um, Lord Nightmon, just really good. It has a secondary effect, um, where when your opponent attacks you, you gain one memory for each roll knight that you have in play once per turn. Um, so that could be good. But mainly, this card is just really great for helping you to grab cards from the trash. Again, it is a very, very good effect. And it can come in handy, but it doesn't come in handy all the time. So arguably, I would say that Alpha Mon and Lord Nightmon are my splash cards. Perhaps even Examon as well. So these seven cards most likely are my splash cards. And then the rest of the deck is... Pretty much what I would imagine the deck to look like. Four Yggdrasils, four BT-13 Magnamon, four BT-8 Magnamon, four uh, BT-13 Dinosmon, four Sardex, 16 Sissamon Blanc, four BT-13 Omecamon, four BT-13 Omnimon, four BT-13 Royal Knights of the Purge, four Sardex, 16, Sardex 12 from Master to Disciple, um, three Gonkamon. I could bump it up to four, um, but three for now. I might remove one of these splash cards, bump this up to four, just because Gonkamon is really good. I think that I'm replacing one copy of Hero with another fourth copy of Marcus Damon. So four Marcuses, two Heroes. Jasmine, good at two, possibly might be bumped to three. And then I would say that these are my splash cards. Um, two copies of Examon, three copies of Alphamon, two copies of Lord Nightmon. Like, I I do think that Lord Nightmon adds consistency to the deck. Um, the question is, is Lord Nightmon worth it? Um, so, I, I you know, I kind of do want to keep Lord Nightmon in the deck. So I'm kind of leaning on, okay, Lord Nightmon could be good in the deck. Especially if you cheese it under King Drasil and then you replay it later with Gonkomon just to retrieve something. So, you know, I would say that um, Lord Nightmon is good. So, I would say that Lord Nightmon is maybe. Examon and Alphamon are more on the splash card side. So, if you want to re replace Examon with Ulfor Speedramon, for example, uh, if that suits your playstyle better, by all means, replace it with Old Force Vigermon. Um, Examon is kind of like a niche thing. Kind of almost like a pet card for me. I like the Examon, but I do think that Old Force Vigermon might be better. Uh, or it could be meta dependent. So, you know, two Examons for now. I re might replace these with something else later. Then three Alphamons. This is very, very meta dependent. Um... Uh, just because I feel like my main weakness with this deck is rookie rushing. <clears throat> um, I think that the better cards to replace this with are Mechanorimon, um, Defexmon, or BT-13 Gallopmon. Kind of leaning on BT-13 Gallopmon just in case my opponent does have Psychomon and then I want to cheese the Gallopmon under King Drasil and then get it out later but honestly I think that this deck is mostly solid 
I just question the Examons and the Alphamons, but I think that if I replace these with Galatmons, um, possibly three or four Galatmons and then possibly another Gonkamon, then this is mostly what my deck is looking like. But I would say that these five are definitely splashes. And then the other four Digi Eggs plus 45 main cards is mostly what this deck is going to look like. Um, yeah. So this was kind of over the place. But hopefully you kind of got to see the video. Um, really good ramp um, even late game, mid game, they can serve as blockers or just free ramping if you play it for free. Um, Dynasmon, pretty good, um, to search, but also can board wipe level threes and level fours. I love to combo Dynasmon when playing Dynasmon for free and then playing Magnamons right after to board wipe my opponent. Or playing Dynasmon from Royal Knights of the Purge and playing, like, any Royal Knight later. Um, right after to board what my opponent's level 3s and level 4s. So this round block, pretty good for digging through your deck, cycling. And can also, um, this round block and Omekamon are really good at chip damage for you to chip at your opponent's security earlier on before you get the Omnimon pieces out. But really good at chip damage, really good at cycling, really good at rampling, ramping and cycling. Um, Gonkamon can also replay Sysmon from Trash, um, giving it Rush when you are finally doing the Omnimon play. Um, really good for ramping, digging, rushing just in case you, or like not even rushing, just bring out a Roll Knight that you want to use its effects for. Um, not the on play, but the other effects. From Master Disciple, I thought that it was kind of meme -y. Um, I kind of wanted to see what it was like playing without this card. So I took out the heroes, bumped Marcus to four, um, replaced it with some Leopard Mons and other Roll Knights. I don't love that deck as much as this deck, just because this is so much more consistent. So I think that From Master Disciple is just one of these cards that I consider to be a staple in the deck. Staple, 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 at least in my deck. Like, these are the four of cards, just because they're very good. Marcus, um, also probably a staple. Um, just to remove the psych mods. So these are probably just the cards that I really do want to keep at four. Like, all these cards really make up the bulk of the deck. Two more memory setters, just for more consistency in getting Master to Disciple. Gonkamon could be bumped up to four. Um, I'm still thinking about it. Jazzmon could be bumped up to two. Lord Nightmon, two is enough, I think. And then Alphamons and Examons, I would probably replace with other splash options. Especially the Alphamon, it does very little for my actual current deck. So I could replace Alphamon with a fourth copy of Gonkamon, for example, or I can just replace these with Galatmons. Um, Examon, you can just replace them with all four Speedramons, or you can just take them out, and then bump up Jezmon to three, bump up Gonkamon to four. Um, but I think that these are more on the splash side. They kind of come in situationally, um, but I don't love them too much um you know but they are still good cards to have uh, the question is if it would be better to replace them with something else like bt13 galamon to scare out of psyche mon and um rookies and champions um this could also be replaced with all for speedramon maybe um or just taking it out to bump up gunkamon and bump up jesmon yeah, so that is where I am right now. So this is version two. Um, if I decide later on to make like a version three of the deck, then I definitely will. Oh, actually, I did make a version three. 
now is a good time to talk about my supposed version 3. The version that I, I extremely disliked. So in the other version, I took out 12 cards and then I put in 12 other cards. So I took out the heroes. I took out from Master to Disciple and this was an instant regret for me. Um, I took out Alpha Mons, Lord Nightmon. How many cards do I take out currently? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh yeah, because I also took out this. The fourth Marcus wasn't there. This was initially the other hero, so I, then I replaced it with twelve cards. So of course, one of the Marcus, and then I tried out three Leopard Mon, one Marcus, three Leopard Mon. 2 BT 13 Cranium on, 2 BT 3 Cranium on, and 4 BT 13 Galtmon. So these were the 12 cards that I subbed in after taking out the 3 Heroes, 3 Alpha Mons, 4 from Master to Disciple, and then 2 Lord Nightmon. So 3, 3, 4, 2. So I add in these 12 cards, so three Leopard Mons, one extra Marcus, so four Marcuses, two Cranium Mons, um, two Cranium Mons, four Galt Mons, and here's the reasoning why I took those cards out. From Master to Disciple, I was still questioning if it was still a good card or not, and everyone was telling me to play Leopard Mon. So I was like, okay, yeah, I can replace that with Leopard Mon, and that was an instant regret. Um, from Master Disciple is just good. Um, it's not it's not kind of a ramp card. It's more like a cycling card. Um, so just replacing a Leopard Mon was not a good substitute. Um, that card is just really good for cycling. Leopard Mon came in handy a few times. Like very rarely. Um, and the ramping from Leopard Mon is not that great. Like it, you still you can play Leopard Mon and then turn your Digimon into blockers after playing uh, another Digimon, um, but Leopard Mon I I don't like Leopard Mon for my deck. I prefer From Master to Disciple. I prefer my other cards, so I did not really vibe with Leopard Mon. Marcus, um, I replaced the heroes, and I, I I just needed another memory center, but after testing out four Marcuses, you know. Um, I will stick with four Marcus's two heroes in my um, final build. Two Craniumons. Um, just in case you are being rookie rushed, you can play Craniumon unaffected by your opponent's effect, uh, unaffected by your opponent's Digimon effects until the end of their next turn. So it could come in handy if you're playing against Shine Greymon or Galtmon or uh, decks with effects that will that are able to target this Digimon and then DP minus it or delete it, it will be unaffected by, by the end of until the end of your opponent's turn. Unaffected by stun in case they stun your Digimon. Um, if you're playing Blue Flare, they attempt to stun this. It won't be stunned. You can still block. But yeah, this is still a good card. Possibly a card that will sub for Xmon, for example, or Alphamon. BT3 Craniumon, also a very good card. So it's a blocker, 13, 000, 13 cost, 12,000 DP. All turns your Digimon with blocker can't be delayed by your opponent's effects. So that is just a really good effect. Um, so I kind of put this in the deck because I was like, oh, cool, it combos with very well Fleppardmon. All your Roller Knights become blockers. This protects all your blockers. So then all your Roller Knights are protected. Uh, but, you know, I don't really like Leopardmon, but this card's effect is still very good. You can just protect 
most of your most of your deck um, if you are choosing Craniumon and if you are playing Gonkomons, um, Magnumons, so Magnumons, Craniumons, Gonkomons, they are just protected by this card. Um, so this is just good. Um, protects against deletion from your opponent's effects, so that's just good. Um, Gallantmon, you can ch um, you can put this under King Drizzle, cheese out later with Purge of the Royal Knights. On attack, you can delete a Psychmon, or even on play, you can delete 6,000 DP or less. On attack, delete 6,000 DP or less. It's just a good rusher. So even if you play it out with Gonkamon's effect, um, this innately has rush and on play. So playing it out with Gonkamon's effect, on play activates, you delete something, rush, and then when attacking, delete something. So this is just good. Um, right now, what I'm thinking is I'm just going to replace three Alpha Mons with Gallant Mon. Possibly add in another Gallant Mon after replacing an Examon. Um, but I think that three or four of these in the deck is pretty good for getting rid of Psych Mon and other rookies or Armor Purge Digimon. This is just good for that. Um, so honestly, after playing this Galatmon, I do like it. So this will probably be in my deck. So after fiddling with this a little bit more, then I will post a third update um, with a finalized version of the deck or a near finalized version of the deck. But here is where I am after uh, playing this at locals the first week and then this week. But I think that Alpha Mon is useless for my build. X Mon is situationally good, but you know, it's still not great. Um, like, my main weakness is Armor Rush. So, Alpha Mon doesn't help me. And even if it does come in handy later on, uh, it's arguable that the benefit that I get from Alpha Mon isn't that great. Especially since I am playing 4 from Master to Disciple, so I already have a lot of cycling going on. So I don't really need to stall for a turn that much. Um, Alphamon could come in handy. I'm not saying that's not a useful Digimon. But I think that there could be more useful options like this Galamon, for example. But yeah, I will mess around with this deck. And I will post a finalized version of this deck in the near future. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, it was just me talking about the process of how the deck was, um, how it looks like. But yeah, this is part two. And be on the lookout for part three in the future. See you later.